What's up guys, Tamar Action here. Samsung's Galaxy A series phones is nowadays pretty much popular and the good part is that the A series lineup is spread out in terms of the price range. And in that, the phone that falls into the 21,000 price range bracket for 2021 is the Galaxy A32. And here as you can see, the A32 has a new Samsung design schematic compared to the last year's A-series phones. And actually one of the good things about this phone is its design and form factor. This is a compact design because of the taller aspect ratio and during my usage period, I've grown to love this design and the form factor. The materials used here are plastic so there isn't any premium feel but since there is a bit of heft, the structure feels to be very solid. And here the best part about this design is the plastic frame which is leaning towards a flatter approach instead of the usual very curvy side. This gives us more surface area to grip the phone and also the buttons provided have good tactile feedback. Now for the ports, well you get the headphone jack and also the charging port is the USB-C port. And all these ports still work fine without any issues and here the headphone jack provided is a big plus because the loudspeaker system is bad. I'm not stating like this because it's a single firing speaker but it's because the loudness level is low and also the quality is not that great. And here one of the standout things about this design is the camera design. Samsung has gone for the old stick it to the back panel design format and here this now feels refreshing and also it looks neat. Actually the back portion has a clean look with just the Samsung branding but then one major issue with this plastic back is that it does get scratched up easily and also it's a fingerprint magnet because of the gloss finish. So that's about the design and here even though it's not perfect I do like it for the price tag the phone is selling. It's a refreshing design and also about the build quality Samsung has done a good job. And here the price tag is a very important thing to keep note of because that's the main issue with this phone. I mean I can without any doubt state that this phone at present is an overpriced phone. There is just one variant available in India and its official pricing without any bank offers is 21,999 Indian rupees. And for that price, the RAM available is 6GB and the storage you get is 128GB which is expandable. But here the problem is that the segment the A32 falls into has very stiff competition and this price territory is the upper mid-range one. And for such a segment, the A32 has two major drawbacks or disappointments and they are with the performance and the camera. Well, the performance issue is noticeable in every task you do which can be a light or a heavy one. I mean, I did notice lags while scrolling through home screen or browsing through Instagram so it's like a prominent thing throughout the user experience which is bad. And the reason for such kind of a performance is because of the processor used here which is the MediaTek Helio G80 processor which is a 12 nanometer octa-core processor and the GPU is Mali G52. And this processor is usually used in phones which are selling in the 10,000 to 12,000 price range and here while testing the phone which runs on One UI 3.1 which is based on Android 11 well the experience like I said is not up to the mark and it's only acceptable if you are a light to very average user. This is a major cost cutting thing done by Samsung and if they have used maybe like the Snapdragon 720G or something well then this phone would have been a great option in terms of performance based on the segment it's selling now. Here the 6GB RAM also doesn't function well because Samsung's One UI is a bit on the heavier side and its RAM management was just fine. And overall even though we can play graphic intense games well for the price it's selling we are actually not getting that kind of a performance. And this is the same with the camera system used here. And that's a bit of a sad surprise because usually Samsung's cameras are not that bad. And here as you can see there are four cameras in the back in which the main sensor is a 64 megapixel f1.8 aperture wide angle camera. Then there is a 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera which has an aperture of f2.2. And the last two cameras are both 5 megapixel ones with aperture f2.4. And in that one camera is a macro camera and the other is a depth sensor. And about the shots captured, well from the main sensor the shots are just fine. And that's applicable in good lighting too. There is sharpness and about the colors it does lean towards a saturated look but then the dynamic range is not that good and hence the overall outcome at times seems nice but for the majority with a bit of challenging situation it becomes an okay photo and here the same is applicable when the light becomes dull. Then about the ultra wide angle camera well in the segment I like it even though there are issues with the edge and also in dark areas. And checking the macro camera, well it's a much better one than a 2 megapixel camera with the main issue being the difficulty to focus properly and lastly about the portrait shots, they are neat looking. Then moving to the video recording side, well the disappointing thing is that the max video resolution supported is 1080p at 30fps and I really wished there was support for 1080p at 60fps videos and here with the supported max resolution, the videos are stable enough and also the focusing was not much of an issue. But then the overall scene looks a bit washed out and like I said if there was support for higher formats, well then it might have been sharper. And overall with the rear camera system, I really did expect better photos from the main sensor and that's the reason I think the rear camera package is not up to the mark. 
and about the front camera system, well it's a 20 megapixel shooter which has an aperture of f2.2 and here the selfies this camera captures are good. I did like it even though the saturation of the photo was bumped up by default but then there is proper detailing and even the skin tone is not much altered. And also the video recording from the front camera is decent with not much noise and the stabilization was not that bad. So that's the camera situation in the A32 and here the camera and the performance is a letdown for the pricing. And if Samsung would have made these two things better, this phone would have been a great option because here the display used is actually a pretty good one for the pricing. This is a 6.4 inch Samsung AMOLED panel which has a resolution of 2400 by 1080 pixels which in turn gives a pixel density of 411 ppi. And here the standard feature is the higher refresh rate which is at 90 hertz. And about the experience from this display, well even though based on looks it's not very attractive because of the U-shaped notch and chunkier bottom bezels, well based on user experience, it's neat for the pricing. The colors look sharp with decent viewing angles and also the peak brightness level this display can reach is more than sufficient to help you while using the phone outdoors. And overall for media consumption or gaming or even reading articles, well the experience is very enjoyable. But here the hype thing that didn't portray well at least from my usage is the 90Hz refresh rate. Usually from higher refresh rate panels, things should be smooth and that enhances the whole experience but here the story is different. I didn't notice that smoothness and I think it might be again because of the processor. And here in this display one more key thing to check is the fingerprint scanner. This is the usual Samsung fingerprint scanner in mid-range phones which means it's slow and not very accurate. I will read the accuracy level in the 70-80% to 80 range and the unlocking time is also on the slower side. But that said an area which is good is the battery. The battery used here is a 5000 mAh battery and from it the battery backup was good to great. If it's a normal usage pattern well then the screen on time I was getting was approximately in the 6 hour plus range and when I switched the pattern to a heavy usage style which is by playing a lot of games well then the screen on time dropped below the 5 and a half hour range. But here the key highlight is that this phone is basically suited for normal usage so in such a scenario you don't have to worry much about the battery because in such a case you can easily get a day's use and actually it can be pushed even to one and a half days of battery backup and here when there is need to charge the phone there is fast charge support and with the included 15 watt charger the charging time to charge the battery from 0% to 100% is approximately two and a half hours. And if in case you're wondering whether there is any wireless charging support, well there isn't any and also the phone doesn't come with any official IP rating. Then about the Bluetooth version of the phone, it's 5 and the Wi-Fi version is dual band Wi-Fi and you even get NFC. And here the earpiece provided is also a good one so for calls I didn't face any issues and lastly if you're wondering about the number of sims that you can use, well it's 2 and there is also a dedicated SD card slot available and here there is no 5G support which is something to keep note of. So that's everything about the Galaxy A32. And here the clear picture that you should be having right now is that for the price this phone is selling, there are a couple of big compromises and I do feel the pricing should have been in the 14,000 to 15,000 price range. But right now that's not the situation and hence if you are planning to buy the A32, I'll suggest to check the competition and here from the A32 the standard things are the design and form factor, the display and the battery backup. That's all for this video guys, hope you liked it. If so, a like will be great and also a sub to the channel will be awesome. See you again in the next one, till then, bye.